Hi everyone. Hope everyone is staying safe and keeping well. And welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure the Meraki MX to send Syslog to Elastic Cloud. And at the same time, we'll go through how to do a quick mapping so that you can make a uh, more meaningful analysis of the logs that are being sent to the Elastic Cloud. So this tutorial is split into eight sections. First, we'll quickly look at how do you set up an Elastic Cloud trial. Then I'll show you how to install and configure log stash in Debian, right, in preparation to collect syslog from Meraki. Uh, I'll also show you where to configure uh, the Meraki MX to send syslog to log stash. We will select the logs to be sent. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, we will configure the port for the logs to be sent to so that we can differentiate um, the logs from the various log sources or the various log type. Next, I'll do a quick uh, you know, sharing of how you can quickly use Grok filter right, to map the events uh, since that uh, the standard Meraki events are not mapped uh, out of the box. right? Uh, there are security events that are already mapped. However, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at uh, you know, the standard logs and show you how you can quickly uh, map the fields of the log so that you can um, make sense of the data uh, quickly, right? Then we'll look at how to create an index, right? This is important as um, if you want to do your discovery and search on Elastic Cloud, it has to be mapped, right? Uh, if not, you know, um, you really can't make sense of the data or it might not even be sent uh, into uh, elastic. So that is one part about elastic, right? Although out of the box, elastic allows you to quickly uh, ingest data through file bits and the rest of the, you know, uh, standard out of the box uh, supported collector like um, metric bit and etc. However, if you are trying to send syslog directly, right, uh, to Elastic Cloud, you know, the documents uh, for that are actually quite uh, limited on the official website and well there are a lot of uh, information you can get from a community website but uh, you know uh, I was hoping that I create a tutorial so that you know it helps you uh, for those who are trying to analyze or look at observability in, in the whole uh, scheme of things how do you quickly ingest um, syslog data without having to send it to a file first and then collect it, right? Of course, in a production environment, that is very different. However, this set a basic for you to understand how to quickly uh, get the Elastic Cloud app running. And for those of you who are in networking and security, uh, you know, quickly get a look at uh, the logs, right? In a graphical user interface to analyze them versus using Grab in a Linux environment to try and, uh, you know, identify or understand the logs, right? And then after that, we will test the output to the Debian console first to make sure that uh, the fields are mapped correctly. And then we will be sending the logs to Elastic Cloud. Over here, uh, do take note, we are not going to share how do you uh, ingest the log so that it is, uh, you can use the Elastic SIEM to do the security analysis. So uh, the mapping for this tutorial are not ECS compliant. Therefore, you will not be able to use the logs as part of your, your security monitoring or threat hunting, right? Uh, however, uh, in the future video, once we understand the basic, we can definitely look at how do we um, make the logs that you're collecting into ECS compliant so that you can um, better understand, right? And, you know, be able to collect telemetry from whether server, network, firewalls, etc., and you can then uh, use it to do more advanced threat hunting, right? As of today, um, you know, there are a lot of products out there. However, you know, um, the integration or the availability of logs are not 
easy, right? The great thing about Elasticsearch is that uh, it is free, right? If you decide to set up your own environment, uh, however, um, you know, Elastic do provide the trial capability, which takes away the hassles of setting up the infrastructure of Elasticsearch, Kibana, um, and uh, the rest of the components that is needed, right? So uh, it's really good for lab practice and understanding of uh, logs and trying to, you know, do your own analysis uh, of the threat that you are facing, right? So once we are done with sending the logs to Elastic Cloud, we'll then look at how do you use the analyze feature uh, or the discover feature in the observability stack to validate that the logs are collected and you can do some form of basic uh, KQL or Kimara query language to uh, quickly look at the logs that have been sent in. Do take note, the versions uh, that I'm doing the uh, tutorial on are the following. We are using Elastic version 7.15. Uh, I've set up Debian 11 and MX I'm using uh, the version 16.12, right? So with that, let's hop over to the first section of the tutorial, which is a very quick demo of how do you set up the Elastic Cloud for lab testing. So let's hop over to section one. So in this section, I will show you how to create a deployment as well as edit the settings. Once you sign up for a trial, you can create your deployment over here by clicking create deployment. Give the deployment a name and then select the location that you want to create an instance. So click on Edit Settings. You can choose from a various SaaS provider, Google Cloud, Azure, or AWS. So for this tutorial, we're going to show you how to do and create the instance on Google Cloud. So we we'll select Google Cloud, select the region closest to you, right? So that you get good performance. For me, I'm going to select Singapore. In terms of hardware profile, Right by default, without any customization, there are a few kinds of you know optimized hardware for you to choose from. Right, so you can choose from storage optimized, storage optimized dense. It all depends on how much data, how fast do you want to get access to those data. Right, so for this tutorial, we're going to keep it as a default using storage optimized, and then you can choose the versions of Elastic available to you if you have been. Working on Elastic for a while, you can always, uh, you know, choose the earlier version, especially if you are migrating from your on-prem older setup to the cloud setup, right? So for this tutorial, we're going to select the latest, which is 7.15, and then click on Create Deployment. The great thing about Elastic Cloud is creating this deployment is really fast, right? It takes probably about 5 to 15 minutes to set up and create the full stack from there. Do remember the password because you're going to need it in your integration. You can always download the CSV file or like in my case, I'm going to copy it and paste it somewhere. Once that's done, you can click on skip and then uh, we will fast forward this as it uh, deploys the backend infrastructure. Okay, so we're done. You can click on continue and you are ready to start adding your data to the Elastic Cloud instance. So uh, I'm not going to show you the usual use case. There are a lot of tutorial that shows you how you can integrate file bit, matrix bit, uh, you know, out of the box, right? To get system logs into Elastic, right? Uh, it is really easy if you are looking at monitoring um, system-based activities, uh, as there's a lot of uh, available integrations and tutorial out there, right? Uh, I'm going to try and do a little bit more on the syslog, uh, SNMP stuff, as you know, those materials are harder to find, right? There are still a lot out there. So, but as part of the observability conversation, you know, it, it is a trial, right? Uh, or it is uh, my interest to get a lab environment up so that I can play with different products, different operating system, devices, maybe even IoT stuff, right? And, you know, there are a lot of observability products out there, but I guess Elastic is one of the hot new kit on the 
uh, blog, right? Can't really say it's very new, but it is something that uh, due to its open source, is gaining a lot of uh, popularity and support out there in the community. Okay, so that's pretty much what I have for section one. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe and stay tuned for the next section.